Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to go step by step by assignment for topic 5, so assignment 5. Um, it's advanced analytics and we're going to do two things. The first uh, uh, assignment A will be mostly about patching uh, the LiDAR data with the UAS data and uh, we're going to go through the seamless uh, patching and uh, smooth fusion. And then on that, we're going to simulate the overland flow. And you will see how, why is it important for overland flow to use the smooth uh, patch, not like the regular patch with edges. But we will get into that. So I hope you uh, listen to the uh, lectures uh, and look uh, on the slides. So here is our assignment A. And then there is also for some extra credit uh, Python sp scripting. We're gonna not. We're not gonna go through that because it's just optional and it's for people that want to go over the top. So fusion of UAS and lidar data. So the first thing I do, I created uh, a folder for assignment five, and now I downloaded all the necessary data. Uh, so you already have the location, the Lake Wheeler location from previous assignment. Here is unzipped. Uh, DEM and DSM from the LiDAR uh, data um, and then we're going to use the GRASS GIS and with the extension patch smooth that actually was written by Anna uh, from our lab. She wrote it and she incorporated this into the uh, GRASS software. Uh, so uh, first we will uh, we will do the uh, fusion and uh, we, we first we will uh, compute the differences between the LiDAR DSM and the UAS DSM for entire raster, raster and along a stable linear feature so a road or a roof and then we will evaluate whether there is significant systematic error because we trust the um, the LiDAR data that has been evaluated and we want to compare how well um, our UAS data represent the surface. Um, taking into account the LiDAR is our reference surface. And then we're going to move into uh, the, uh, the, the fusion and we're going to create a DSM for entire area using two approaches and uh, seeing how these approaches work for um, for the water flow modeling. So uh, the thing I already have here downloaded is uh, the color scale. You can do it manually, but you can also uh, do it using the uh, file with the data. And I downloaded the, uh, the LiDAR, DSM, and DEM. In this package, there are some additional ones from the secret area, but we're going to be using only MedPines because it's where we flew. I mean, we flew in Seagraph, but not for the class, so I'm just uh, uh, letting you skip that part. <laughs> so first, I'm going to open the GRASS GIS. Okay, so here I, here I have the, uh, the Lake Wheeler uh, location, and I have maps at permanent. I'm going to create a new one, A5, assignment 5A. And start session. Uh, then what we usually do is set our working directory, uh, grass working environment, change working working directory, and I want to do it. I have it on this D assignments. Okay, and assignment five. Okay. Now because I have all the downloaded data, it's going to be read automatically. First, I'm unpacking the DSM. Okay. And then I'm unpacking the DEM. Great. Um, and now we can uh, display the summary of statistical properties. First, we're going to set the region as uh, the region of the extent of the LiDAR. The flag P means print, so we're going to also see 
here printed out the borders and the resolution of C0.3, so 30 centimeters. Uh, now we are going to calculate. We're going to just see what are we calculating. So this is difference LIDAR and uh, Agisoft uh, generated UAS uh, from June. So we are dividing those, uh, those rasters. Not dividing, uh, uh, subtracting one raster from another. That's what I meant. Sorry. Okay. We have that. And now we use the color ramp that we have saved. Color table. So this is colors. We want to uh, color the raster we just created. And the rules for coloring are in the text file that we downloaded. So the text file is here. Okay. Let's click enter. And you can see here how to now I will show you how to display the legend ma oh no manually okay I, th I have it so this is add map elements and now add raster legend and this is the one that we want to use so uh, this is from 37 to negative 36 we would m probably like just to display this little tiny part of it so if I double click on it and I go to subset, I can just put the lower uh, border and the higher, like one meter. And now we see more precisely, like the light, uh, uh, light blue, like a cyan is about uh, half a meter, then darker blue is meter and the same with the orange. So what I uh, want from you is to describe why are those differences. You can kind of guess what was what was going on in here or what was going on in here. You know this data also from orthophotos. So what is growing here? Why there is such a difference? So that's it. And now we can also run some univariate statistics on that. And here I count on your uh, knowledge of what is the standard deviation, what is the mean, what's the variance, and you can see here mostly the minimum and the maximum. It's really huge, but remember there are outliers. So the DSM usually has something that is created, like so-called low points and high points, like a noise. So we would like to more look at the mean. The mean is just the difference of half meter, right? Um, and uh, what's the standard deviation? It's not that the range of 72 meters that there are actually differences in 70. I'm telling you too much. I'm just like writing a report for you. I'm gonna do less commentary now. And uh, now we do the same thing with the LiDAR DSM not, uh, and the PIX4D data to see like which one was more, um, I would say, uh, accurate. Okay, we have that. We also want to use the colors, the same. Um, and now you can toggle here and see how does it change. And you can analyze which one do you think is more accurate. Or are there any areas where one is more accurate and another is less accurate? That's also in the universe yet statistics also here on our console. We have uh, data here. Now what else we can do? You can uh, analyze it along some. Uh, so there is a difference like we can expect differences here because something is growing here, right? But what should remain the same are stable features like the road, nothing is growing on the road, or the top of the roof. Um, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna create a profile line that is, um, uh, here are the uh, end, the beginning and the end, Th those are our coordinates in, uh, 
not in the geographic, but in projected reference system. So in North Carolina state plane in meters. Copy that. And oh, I already have that, that it exists because I created that before. I already have this one that says road, but it should be created for you. And now we gonna create a raster uh, and a vector, a vector file that is uh, that the rules for creating this vector file is are hidden in the uh, road txt file. Okay, you can see it's right now displayed in here, and we can also run univariate statistics and what we want to calculate it's just univariate st statistics for the differences see how it changed what's the standard deviation just for the road in comparison to what was standard deviation for the whole field so now to, uh, for uh, doing more visual comparison we can uh, draw a profile how do we do it we go to analyze map this is this little button and we do profile surface map we want to have um, um, we want to choose rasters for profiling so the one um, which one is that zero six agisoft zero six picks for D and LIDAR we want to do some okay and now what we're gonna do we're gonna draw it on the map this is the draw transect and I want to do from the beginning to the end of the road and you can see here how does this uh, look along the road and here you can save the file now we're gonna do wait I think I need to close that to lose it and now again create profile surface map and I'm gonna do the same Agisoft that picks for D and a LIDAR and I'm gonna draw one that is somewhere in the middle of the field like here and I can see here what are the differences and as you can um, as you can see those two raster are really close to one another those two the, the this one raster is uh, way down here so okay i got my own mistake i clicked previously on one with no gcps and you can see one that they were like flying in the air right now i I've double checked and I was like, oh, I need to put the GCP ones. So here is the GCPs and you can see how the green line is obviously a LiDAR, right? And how these two other are, um, are the pix 4 d and Agisoft because they have some, uh, this is how I drew the line, see? So this is how it varies. Okay. Let's go to the next step. Um, the question for you is why there are the distortions earlier along the road uh, uh, low and then high in the fields. So we are going to compute a clipped uh, DSM now for the patching purposes. The region and now if we created a smaller region we're going to copy the same the same uh, layer 
it's just gonna copy the part that is within the region so it was it, it will be the clip uh, CL with clipped for the rest of my assignment we're gonna use this clipped uh, um, I can show you how does it look like the clip oh I didn't the clipped one looks like that so this is just the smaller part and what we're gonna do we're gonna try to patch it so we're gonna use this area from the UAS survey but all the rest around will be from the LiDAR um, so uh, for just for purposes we're gonna name rename the, this raster to UAS and we're gonna re rename this long uh, names to just LiDAR DSM and LiDAR DEM. Console, just for in copying in grass, it looks uh, it is for renaming too. So we just copy this raster and we name it like that and it's gonna be a copy uh, with a changed name. And the same for the DM. Okay, now we do the we set the region for the larger, so for the uh, region that represents the LiDAR DSM. And now we are going to use uh, a simple tool that is called R patch. So it's going to just take this. Um, it's gonna like literally it's how the patch will be applied to your like uh, pants it's gonna take this UAS data and it's gonna merge it with the LiDAR just on uh, uh, with sharp edges so just like the patch will work for the pants so here it's what I'm gonna do And in order, so it looks nice, right? It, you don't see anything, but in order to see how does it really look, we're gonna compute the shaded relief with the Z exaggeration of five. And now you can easily see, I'm gonna zoom in how, oh no, how it's patched, how you have the sharp edge on uh, within uh, the patch so here is the high resolution UAS data and here is the lower resolution uh, UAS data and here is the patch like a step so what we want to do we want to get rid of this step so first what we're going to do we're going to compute the distance map distance map you will see that row distance I'm going to use that it just creates a map from the distance from the center. The uh, more it is from the center, the higher is the value of this. Now we're going to use this as uh, the distance from the UAS. So the, the closer to the center means it's further from the edge. And this is uh, the uh, further from the edge into the outside direction. So what we're going to do now, we're going to uh, make a, a, f a first that a five meter distance uh, patch. So what does it say? If the distance, so this distance map is larger than five, then we're going to use the UAS data. But if distance is equal zero, uh, then we use the LiDAR DSM and then in between, we just create a map that blends in uh, the distance from LiDAR and the distance from the UAS. And now we're going to do the same thing for 20 meters. So we're going to see what works better for the data. So we're going to create the same thing for 20 meters. And now oh, we want to uh, use the shaded relief for comparison so I'm gonna zoom in into the same direction and I'm gonna first I'm gonna compute this one oh. and 
yes so you already can see in layers I can just touch smooth I don't want this thing so this is the one that has 20 meters this is the one that has 5 meters and this is the one that is simple patch with no blending smoothing in between again 5 and then 20 you can see that how much smoother does it look like um, and now what we want to do, we want to create a bare ground data. So obviously from the UES, we do not have the bare ground data. We have the vegetation that is on the top. So what we want to do, we want to replace this vegetation with the LiDAR data. So first we set the region. We just want the UES part. And now we do the conditional statement what this is our assumption if the UAS is higher than li than lidar by 30 centimeters it means something is growing there or some, a building is standing there or something like that so we want to create uh, in uh, if it's smaller than uh, than 0 0.3 meter it's UAS. If it's larger, it's null, so empty. We're going to create holes in that. And then we want to fill these holes with the LiDAR data. What we do next, we uh, need to uh, download this extension, R Patch Smooth, like install the extension, not download. Um, okay, it's downloaded, very compiled, installed. Great. Uh, in the case, we will use overlap with 10 meters, and then we're going to do some different approach. So first, as usually, we set the region, and then we use just the tool R patch smooth, and the input A is the UAS ground, and input B is the LiDAR DEM, and our output will be LiDAR, uh, LiDAR UAS ground smooth, and smoothing distance is 10 meters. Now we're going to do what we did before, so uh, compute the shaded relief map. Let me zoom. Oh, you can see already here how much of a difference it is. So this is not. This is the one that we create that we want to it to be a bare ground data. And this is when we were just patching uh, UAS with with LiDAR. Okay, so okay, here we have the 10 meters, but in the second case we'll use an intelligent approach. You can read about it more if you read the uh, arch patch smooth. It's just, um, it is a variable overlap based on the elevation differences. So if there is a bigger difference in elevation, they take into account larger distance to smooth it. When there is small uh, elevation differences, along the borders, the distance is much shorter. So this is why we use the flag S. It's going to take a little bit longer because of the calculations. Okay, it's done. And now we're going to see How does it differ? So I'm gonna. This is the variable. Variable. I don't want the overlap data. Oh, I don't want that thing. So you can see a little bit of differences on the edges. You can see edges here and edges here. Yeah. Okay. And uh, now we're going to compare the surface flow pattern on patched and uh, fused DSM. So we're going to run uh, the uh, overland flow simulation on both the one that is just patched and on the one that is uh, patched using the smooth, smooth fusion. We start as usually with region 
and we create a watershed. And we then, okay, this is our watershed, and then we uh, compare, uh, um, uh, we generate a vector file out of the raster with uh, with those watershed basins here. Okay, here we are. Those are our basins. Uh, here I just changed the opacity of. Uh, uh, oh, not this one. Of the vector, so I can see below how the flow accumulation map looks like, and above that, these are the divisions uh, between the basins. Uh, so next, what we want to do, we need to um, uh, compute the first order special derivative uh, derivatives. Uh, so we can do it using slope and aspect tool. So first, the region, of course, always, and then we use. This is just uh, we're going to need those layers for the hydrological modeling that we're going to do next. So this is our smaller area that we're going to use. And then here is the whole long, uh, as you can see here are our uh, first order derivatives, dx and dy. You can uh, read about more about the uh, hydrological modeling tool arts in water if you go to the um, manual so this one is run on the patched uh, so on the simple patch and it's going to take uh, a little while it's a time consuming uh, computation so I'm going to pause it and then I'm going to come back to you so yes we're done and now I want to display uh, the final the final uh, layer, so the one, the 20 in here, depth 20, so we can see where is, I'm gonna do it closer, oh, closer, yeah, so you can see here there is this I'm not going to explain you what is that, but you have to uh, describe like what is wrong with this water flow modeling and also look closer at the edges. How does the water behave if it's artifacts or does the water actually fly, uh, flow like uh, that? Uh, so now we will do the same thing for two other um, uh, two other options. So our smooth with 20 meters remember we were just doing that so first I'm gonna calculate the derivatives that's boring but now again our sim water with a different elevation raster all the other uh, variables are the same and again here we wait so we are finally done with this one. This is the last one that is waiting for us is the one with the seamless fusion, the special tool R patch smooth. So first I again um, calculate the derivatives and run the simulation. See you soon. So uh, here I have loaded uh, the first, second, and third water flow simulation. The last uh, one with the 20 at the end, after 20 minutes. And we can see here our patch. Look here what's happening. This is when we smooth it. But we still have this area here. And when we use the just the ground data, created by patching LiDAR and UAS. This is how it looks like. 
the last part of the assignment is um, visualize it using animation tool and you have the YouTube video for that here so I don't have to cover it in this short tutorial so this is the, it for assignment A and it has been 30 minutes so I'm going to post this and then I'm going to post the one from uh, assignment 5B.